Well, welcome to the season finale of Addictive Fishing. You know, just like every other season out there, we've been to some really great spots, caught some really great fish. But today's episode is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to introduce you to the crew, and we're going to see what their favorite picks are. Up first, Kevin McCabe, the executive producer for Addictive Fishing. I have no idea what he's going to pick, so let's see what he picked. Hope you all enjoy it. My favorite show of this season we shot late last year while we were in Charleston, South Carolina. We got to fish the flood tide. I had never seen anything like this. The tide had to come up six feet before we even could get into the fishing spot. So we sat there for an hour and a half to finish this show. The fish had to be on, Blair had to be on, the guide had to be on, and the camera guy all had to be working together to make this show happen. And even the music guys knocked this one out of the park. This is my favorite show of the season. About two boat lengths, he's going away from us. Yep, right in that direction. Just keep watching the grass. You'll see the grass is just kind of bouncing back and forth. He's is. just snaking through the grass. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Fish on, yeah. brother. Nice job, man. <laughs> nice job. Right in the grass. I'm gonna change it. Well, welcome back. As you can see, we are in the grass. Nice job, Blair. And this is so much fun. We've been in here waiting and waiting and waiting for this tide to come up. And it's finally come up far enough. And uh, these guys are just in here tailing like crazy. We've been tossed on a couple here and there. Yeah. Normally right here is dry. Absolute dry. Look at that fish all lit up. Look at that pretty red fish. You ready for him? Yeah, let me slide in there. Slide back. Tail all lit up, same yeah. color as the rod. <laughs> there you go. Hey, these guys might be small, but the way we're doing it now, we're, we've waited and waited and waited for the tide to come up. And as you can see, it's finally come up high enough where it's basically filled up the little low spots in here. And what these red fish are doing, they're up in here eating all the fiddler crabs that are in here and all the other little that you know, little shrimp. shrimp and whatnot. So if you can see, I got the DOA shrimp here basically on a swim bait hook again. And I'm just reeling it through the grass when I see them and you drop it right on their heads and boom, they jump on it. Pretty little fish, huh? Definitely pretty little fish. All right. Send him back on the way. He was ready. That is a well-deserved redfish. Thank you. I'm gonna shake your hand on that one, I tell you. Good job, man. Now what he's done, we've pushed back in here as far as we can get basically in these little ponds. And we only have probably, what, an hour, hour and a half to yeah, fish? Yeah, about that, yeah. But the redfish get in here and they tail in the grass and uh, let's go find another yeah, one. Yeah, That was cool. Cool, good that job, cool. man. All right, I saw another one down here at the bottom. All right, look here, Blair, here's one right here. Right here, he's him. moving left to right. Oh, oh, oh I got him, I got By him. By three o'clock, three o'clock. He's, He's coming right to you. Why did that drop it right in his face? Why did it drop in his face? Oh my God! Nice, brother. <laughs> Woo, great job, Blair. Great job. <laughs> That's no mosquito lagoon, Redfish. Great that job, one's man. Like he's from Louisiana. <laughs> wow, that was such a cool take. That was a cool take. Oh. Come on, dude. Trying to stay underneath this ranger. He likes this little phantom. <laughs> Is it pulling all right through the grass for you? Yeah, man, this thing does really good. Cool. Are you, you want to stay on up there? He's talking about that pink color in these fish. Where do you see how red this fish is? Absolutely awesome. I'm glad we downsized on this tackle too. Yep. Just makes it that much more fun. Got another one in sight back there behind us again. <laughs> look how look at the color on that fish. Look at his tail. Yeah, so this is a golden redfish here. Swim bait hook did his job. Look at that pretty redfish. No spots on the on this side. Look at that. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Golden. <laughs> Looks like a little pumpkin. But look at that, no spots on that side whatsoever. That fish had some really pretty color. That's like I was saying, you can see these fish when they're up here in that grass. They're lit up, pumpkin orange, just kind of floating through the grass. Well, that was our executive producer's pick for the season. I sure hope y'all enjoyed that. You know, I've known that dude since the second grade, and I tell you what, there ain't nobody out there I'd rather be doing this with. 
Up next, we're gonna see our cameraman, meet George, and see what his favorite pick is. So y'all stay tuned. We're gonna be right back with the season finale 2011 of Addicta Fishing. Let's go then. Fish on, baby. Clear the line, baby. Clear it, clear it, clear it, clear it, clear it. Welcome back to the season finale of Addictive Fishing. You know, one of the toughest jobs out there on the crew has to be the cameraman, and he probably gets the least amount of respect out there. He has to have everything just so perfect out there. The conditions have to be just right, and they're not a lot of times. He's got to wipe the lens. Everything's got to be perfect so he can make those fish look good and kind of make me look good, too. So, George Albright, let's see what your pick is for 2011. My favorite show this year was Poontastic with Hans and Lau. We went down to the Keys. It's a beautiful scenery down there. And we went after Tarpon. And the best thing about uh, going after Tarpon is just the whole battle. And it's this marriage between Blair, the fish, the guide, myself, the producer on the camera boat. And it's just whole orchestra of trying to get all the shots you need to do. And the, the, just the sheer adrenaline rush you get from chasing such a big fish. So I love going after Tarpon. It was a magical show. And I'm sure you're going to love this one because it was my favorite show, Poontastic. Strip it, strip it, strip it, strip it, strip, 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 strip. I think one might be on it. Keep stripping. Feed that second fish. That second fish is coming up. All right. It's looking at your fly. Nope, feed the back fish. Good shot. Strip it. Strip, strip, strip. Nope. Wasn't happy. He's coming. Fish hit on, him, baby. Hit him. Hit him. <clears throat> clear the line, baby. Clear it, clear it, clear it, clear it, clear it. You're on the reel, baby. On the reel. That's the way to hook him. Right by the boat, huh? <laughs> Looks like a good little fish, too. Yep. Come on, baby. Been out here all morning waiting for these guys to come by and eat. All right, I'm gonna let the push boat go. I'm gonna crank up and chase him. Go. He is on the reel, baby. Did you not see him coming up behind it? I didn't see that one. I was looking <laughs> at the one in front of that one. <laughs> I saw that one react to it. Is it mirror? Did he make a 180 to eat that fly? Yeah. No, he came right at He was coming right at it. Oh, okay. It was tickling his nose the whole time. <laughs> oh, man. You had your eye on that other fish. Luckily, this was the smaller of the two. Yeah, the other one was bigger. That's why I was looking at that one. And there's a crab trap way out there. Don't worry. We'll be all right. As long as you don't put a lot of pressure, we'll be okay. He's nowhere near that crab trap. How much backing you got on this Nautilus? Over 300 yards. Okay. You're good. I think we're good here. I mean, now that he's done with that first initial run. Uh-oh, now I say that. No, he ain't done. It's gonna take a while, folks. <laughs> I don't mind as long as I got one on now on a windy day like this. <laughs> Y'all can't tell, the wind's blowing probably 20, at least 20 miles an hour, and it's a steady wind. And uh, we've been sitting on the bank all morning long and what happens is when the tide changes, the tarpon start falling out and they come up and they eat little green flies when they put them in their head. Little green cookie. Little green cookie. You gotta love it when they jump. Almost get your fly line in the guides. Seeing fly line? Seeing fly line. Ooh. Feeling fly line? I'm hearing fly line. Mm. Uh-oh, crab trap in front of us. Those will cause you trouble. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good fish there, bro. Oh, yeah. Not a huge fish, one of these little males, but you know what? It's my favorite size fish right there. Yeah, when they get too big, man, they just are way too much work. Oh, yeah. You know, it always amazes me that you get these little teeny tiny flies like this and you get these great big fish eating them. Then again, I guess, elephants. like my buddy from Louisiana says, heavy, elephants eat peanuts, brother. <laughs> <laughs> It's a great concept to go by. Tarpoony, baby. You gotta love them. Ain't nothing wrong with that. It's May right now and it, it's absolute peak tarpon time, wouldn't you say? I'd say so. <laughs> well, we've only... what we've seen the last uh, few last, hours. Yeah, last couple hours we've seen them just parading by the boat. And you just gotta keep throwing at them and throwing at them and throwing at them until you finally find that one that's hungry that eats. <sighs> Slowly but surely. 
this one doesn't want to play nice. I guess my new flats blue fly rod did this one pretty good, huh? I would say so. Tell you, for a 10 weight, this one sure feels like a 12 weight to me. Definitely. But it casts a like a good butt. 10 weight. It's when they're ready, they're ready. And when they're ready, a lot of times they just come up and lay on the side of the boat here. Got him that time? No. Is he done? Is he done? Oh. Hanson's wrestling. It's a wrestling match. Oh. He ain't going nowhere now. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Hanson Lau. Here, let's see if I can get that fly out of there. Right down the corner of the mouth. Perfect. Perfect hook. Uh. Uh, guys, these tarpon are so unique to this area. And I tell you what, they there's so many different ways you can catch them here. You got them on the flats like we're doing right now. You got them around the bridges. You can live bait them. And uh, Hanson loves doing the fly rod, and for you fly rodders out there that have been begging for a fly show, here you go. The king of the flats right here, baby. You know, one thing I absolutely love about tarpon Hanson is just they, their head looks like it's chiseled out of a block of ice. That is so beautiful. One, most be one of the most beautiful fish in the world. That's okay. why they call them the glamour fish. Let's get some water through his gills Let's and go, go get on our steak. You're not gonna take too long with this oxygen in the water. Yeah, these fish usually revive pretty good here in the ocean. Well, off he goes there, brother. Well, that was our cameraman's pick for the season. I hope y'all enjoyed that shot pretty good. George's work can be seen all over the world, and if you watch TV, I guarantee you've seen his work. He works NFL, NASCAR, MLB, you name it, he's probably filmed it. So. He does great work, and I tell you what, we're real lucky to have him on our crew. Up next, you're gonna see my favorite pick of the season, so stay tuned. We're gonna be right back with the season finale 2011 of Addictive Fishing. Let's go then. There he is. Nice. Oh, that one's taking a little drag. Welcome back to the season finale of Addictive Fishing. Up next, you're gonna see one of my favorite picks from 2011, had a lot to choose from, but this one, we traveled all the way across the United States, out to Oregon, fishing the Columbia River. Caught a fish that's been on the bucket list since I was in the second grade. I hope you all enjoy this as much as I did catching it. There you go, Blair, back rod, back rod, back rod, back rod. There he is. Nice. Oh, that one's taking a little drag. Woohoo, this could be our big boy. That's acting like an oversize right there, boys. That's a big fish. That's a big boy. We gotta go with him, guys. We gotta go with him. Chasing him like a tarpon. Oh, hold on. Okay, I'm we're gonna take off he stop. Is he into ya? Yeah, he stopped. May have turned him. But if he decides to go, Blair, we gotta we may have to go with him. I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy out of the road real quick. How tight do you go on the drags? Oh, you don't want to crank it completely tight because if it's a big boy, which I'm thinking it probably is, it's a good fish. It feels pretty good. He's either a real big keeper or he's possibly an oversize. He's not doing that that first initial rip. Usually when it's a big oversize. Oh, he was yeah, wrapped. there he goes. He's wrapped or that or he's on a rock. No, I, it's just a big boy. I think from the way you got him turned, Blair, that we're looking at another, another keeper possibly. Another keeper, huh? How do you like those rods, Blair? So far, they're working pretty good. I might have to get me a flats blue made up like this. I feel that head shaking. Hey, you just got a weird fight to them. Unlike Every any... one of them's different. I like the, the clarity of this water. You never know how big he is until he's like six inches underneath the water. Oh, there he is. Ah, uh, it's probably a short keeper. I thought he was gonna be a lot bigger than that. Oh, but he might look make at it. that sturgeon, baby. He's gonna be real close. But I think he might just, I think he's just a little under, but we're going to measure him anyway. Okay. Let's see what we got. If he makes 41, he he's makes be close. It. Now, this fish, you see the salt difference in this guy? See those scutes? Yeah. This guy's fresh out of the ocean. And you say the scutes get get more pronounced in the yeah, fresh water. You see in how much sharper that one is? Yeah. Be real careful. As they get out in that salt water, they'll start growing those scutes on there, and they are super, super sharp. And what that's for is so when fish come up behind them and try and eat them when they're babies, that's real sharp and they can't swallow them. It cuts them and they spit them right back out. That's why these guys are prehistoric and made it through the ice age because. 
fish this size, how old is this one? That guy's saying? right there. He's probably seven or eight years old, right in there. But they have a growth spurt at three, seven, and nine. And then uh, after about 12, uh, they kind of go through a, uh, you know, a stage where they, they just grow real slow. And then right back uh, after about 12, 13, then they start getting into that oversized range. And they don't really have a, a, a spurt like they normally do. But uh, basically, that's a really, really healthy fish right there. That's a beautiful keeper. You see how they almost have like a copper tint to them, a bronze tint through them? I mean, they almost feel like metal. I mean, it's like sandpaper, and it's almost like metal. It's kind of like a shark skin almost, it feels it, like it, a it's, bit. Oh, it's, it's quite, I wish they'd make wallets or purses or something out of it because they'd last forever. Hey, maybe you can find a new trade. <laughs> a wallet that'll make it through the ice it age, might hurt your butt. <laughs> might hurt your butt driving around in the truck, but other than that. That's why I wear the gloves. I don't want to be grabbing these guys, but. Don't want to get that? Yep. You, that Blair, right there? Blair's been bit by a sturgeon and they don't have teeth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get a Let's see what we got on this guy. Get him. He's going to be real close, Blair. Real close. Okay, get his nose there. Yeah, inch short. Inch short. Well, let me release that yep. puppy. Got him? Go ahead, fling that bad boy back in the creek. <sighs> Number three that didn't go in the bucket. Well, I tell you guys, it was tough picking one favorite shot out there for the whole season. We had so many to choose from. All the way down in the Keys, I caught a 140 pound tarpon on the fly. Came back up to the Space Coast, catching cobia right there in my backyard. Then we went up to Colorado and actually fishing out of a little eight inch ice hole, caught a 36 inch lake trout. Pretty awesome. One of the best jobs I've ever had in my life. Can't wait to keep it on going till next year. Up next, not really my favorite part, but it's going to be your favorite segment of the show. Uh, Y'all stay tuned. You'll see what I'm talking about. We'll be right back. Let's go then. We're going to see if we can show you a redfish out of kayak. <laughs> and that's the way you do it. <laughs> Welcome back to the season finale of Addictive Fishing. You know, every year everybody always asks us, what happens to the bloopers? And you know, you guys that have been following us for years now know that at the end of the season, the season finale, the final segment, y'all get to see all my mess ups. And you know, like I said, it's not my favorite part of the show. Y'all sure like seeing them. So here you go. Oh, oh. son of a b Sometimes I'm about when swimming. Jump off the leader. Ah. All right, Trevor, you said when the, when the time that's your bait check for today. Remember one thing, my phone's going off. <laughs> Ow, son of a... Let's <laughs> see if I can do what I can do. We're captain. <laughs> <laughs> ah, my bad, sorry. So we're gonna see if we can show you a redfish out of kayak. <laughs> and that's the way you do it. <laughs> hey, you know what? That uh, talon works pretty good. God bless America. Well, I sure hope y'all enjoyed those bloopers out there. We had a lot of fun shooting those shows and luckily nobody got hurt. I want to say thanks to all you viewers out there each and every week, each and every year you guys have been tuning in. Also want to throw out a big thanks to our sponsors out there. Without you guys, Addictive Fishing sure wouldn't be around. Don't forget about the website either, addictivefishing.com. You can also find out where we're going to be on the Mogan Tour at the Dick Sporting Goods, whether it be near you or far away. Check it out on the website. And while you're there, also sign up for the new Mogan Lounge. we got a web exclusive out there. It's called After the Fight. Y'all be able to check out at the end of this show of just what I'm talking about. That's about it. Wraps it up. Till next year, y'all have a good one. Tight lines, be safe on the water, and catch a Mogan. Stick them, stick them. Hi. There is fish on, baby. Oh, he ain't no little one either, is he? <laughs> I saw the pink line, and I was like, uh-oh. He had already got done rigging it. You know, it was a nice, beautiful rig, and I said, okay. It'll be a small fish. I can handle that 20 pound test. Line's holding up great. That's the wind tamer line, brother. You ain't gonna hurt that. What stuff. pound is it? 20. 20? Yeah, I didn't want to tell you that at first. <laughs> You're bringing a knife to a gunfight. Really? 20 pounds? That's what we're gonna go attack 100 plus pound fish with, this 20 pound test? No. <laughs> Not a good idea. Wore through it. You know, there was some beeping going on. 
I'm sure whoever's running the thing is bleeping me.